Curve Optimizer and Curve Shaper are not the only ways to undervolt your Ryzen CPU. You can also undervolt by having a better cooler. Let me explain. In this video, I cover three topics related to undervolting Ryzen CPUs. How the voltage frequency temperature curve enables undervolting through lower temperatures. How Curve Optimizer works in different operating temperature scenarios and how Curve Shaper temperature points provide us with much more precise control over our CPU undervolt. All right, we have a lot to cover, so let's get started. For those who didn't watch my first video on Curve Shaper, let's start with the basics. What is a VFT curve? Simply put, a voltage frequency temperature curve describes the relationship between an operating frequency the operating temperature and the voltage required to operate at that frequency and temperature. While every modern SLC has a factory fused voltage frequency curve to dynamically adjust the power consumption depending on the workload needs, not all SLCs have a temperature aspect. It's not easy to visualize a VFT curve because of its three dimensions, voltage, frequency, and temperature. So let's start with a VF curve at a fixed temperature and then change the temperature to see how the VF curve behaves. Here's the default voltage frequency curve of a Ryzen 9 9950X processor at an operating temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. Since the processor has two CCDs of quite different quality, we have two distinct curves. For simplicity purposes, let's focus on the CCD0 curve and compile the VF curves at 0 and 80 degrees Celsius. We can immediately make a couple of important observations. First of all, clearly this CPU has different voltage frequency curves at different temperatures. This clearly highlights that we should always talk about Horizon's VFT curve rather than the VF curve. Furthermore, the VF curve deviates more at higher frequencies than at lower frequencies. For example, the difference at 4.7 GHz between 0 degrees and 80 degrees is only 35 millivolt. However, at 5.3 GHz, the difference is 116 millivolt. Lastly, we can see that at a similar voltage, there's much more frequency headroom at lower temperatures. For example, 1.2 volt yields 5,226 megahertz at 80 degrees, 5,415 megahertz at 50 degrees, and well over 5.6 gigahertz at zero degrees. This also holds true for CCD1, by the way. We can see that at 1.2 volt, for example, we almost get 5.4 gigahertz at zero degrees Celsius, but only five gigahertz at 80 degrees Celsius. The cool thing, literally, is that Precision Boost also scales with negative temperatures. Check out the VF curve at minus 50 degrees Celsius, for example. How cool is that? At minus 50 degrees Celsius, we get 5.8 gigahertz with only 1.13 volt. However, at 80 degrees Celsius, 1.1 volt gets us barely over five gigahertz. Wow. The general takeaway from this data is that by lowering the operating temperature, we can effectively undervolt our Ryzen CPUs. Undervolt and Ryzen CPUs, we've heard that before, right? Yes, we can also undervolt using Curve Optimizer. But who does it best? Curve Optimizer or our cooler? Curve Optimizer is one of the most important tools of the Precision Boost Overdrive Toolkit. It is most commonly used to undervolt the CPU by applying a negative curve optimizer. If we set curve optimizer to negative 30, we shift the entire voltage frequency curve along the voltage axis. And suddenly we need significantly less voltage for every operating frequency. For example, with CCD0 at 50 degrees Celsius for five gigahertz, we needed about 1.1 volt by default. But with a minus 30 curve optimizer, we now only need 1.005 volts. Now let's compare the curve optimizer and the operating temperature undervolt mechanisms. It's quite obvious that curve optimizer and lowering the operating temperatures have a very different impact on the VF curve. 
curve optimizer's impact is much more homogeneous across the curve, while lowering the temperature is much more impactful at the upper end of the curve than at the lower end of the curve. For example, at minus 30 curve optimizer, the voltage required for 4.7 GHz decreases by 85 millivolt. In contrast, reducing the operating temperature by 100 degrees Celsius from plus 50 to minus 50 degrees Celsius only reduces the voltage by 30 millivolts. However, with a temperature of minus 50 degrees Celsius, we get over 5.8 gigahertz at 1.13 volt, an improvement of more than 600 megahertz over default. In contrast, minus 30 curve optimizer only yields about 5.5 gigahertz at that voltage. That's still a 300 megahertz improvement from stock, but 200 megahertz less than when we reduce the temperature to minus 50 degrees Celsius. So what if we apply best of both worlds, a curve optimizer and lower temperatures? Well, unfortunately, my minus 30 curve optimizer wasn't stable at minus 50 degrees Celsius. However, it was stable at zero degrees Celsius. We can see that the shape of our curve optimized zero degree curve resembles very much the one without a curve optimized setting. It's just shifted along the voltage axis. For reference, here's the curve at minus 50 degrees again. We can see that the curve optimized zero degrees curve is for the large part achieving higher frequencies at lower voltages. It's only around 5.7 gigahertz that our much cooler curve achieves slightly better frequencies. There's another, perhaps more intuitive way to look at the behavior. This time I track the CPU frequency in an all core light workload, starting from minus 50 degrees Celsius all the way up to 90 degrees Celsius. At default, we find that CCD0 and CCD1 maintain their IFMAX frequencies until about 10 degrees Celsius. Then the maximum frequency drops gradually until about 80 degrees Celsius. After applying a negative 30 curve optimizer, both CCD0 and CCD1 can maintain their Fmax frequency for much longer. The initial frequency drop happens only around 40 degrees Celsius. Now that we understand the AMD Ryzen VFT curve, let's bring Curve Shaper into the discussion. Curve Shaper is the newly announced tool of the Precision Boost Overdrive 2 toolkit. It was announced alongside the Ryzen 9000 CPUs. Let's have a look at the feature in the BIOS. In theory, it seems Curve Shaper is pretty straightforward. You get 15 additional tunable points across the VFT curve. But the devil is in the details because AMD's Precision Boost 2 technology doesn't really work with VFT points. So instead of getting a list of specific tunable VFT points, we get five regions and three temperatures. The regions have a bit of a vague terminology and are not clearly defined. I talked at length about these regions in the previous Curve Shaper video where I laid out the idea of shaper points. A shaper point is defined by a shaper frequency and a shaper magnitude. The voltage for the frequencies around the shaper point behave like they're in a gravitational shaper field in the sense that for frequencies within the shaper field, the closer to the shaper point, the larger the impact of the shaper magnitude. The shaper points behave independently, so we can come up with pretty wonky VF curves. For example, we can create a curve that undervolts below and overvolts above 5.2 GHz. In my first Curve Shaper video, I totally ignored the temperature dimension of Curve Shaper. However, let's have a look at it today. The idea is pretty simple. We can have the shaper point act stronger or weaker depending on the operating temperature. So we could, for example, say that we only want to undervolt when the CPU temperature is really high. Let's set up a test with the Ryzen 9 9950X CCD0. In this test, I configured the high temperature frequency shaper point with varying temperature configurations. Now let's look at the behavior of the VF curve at 50 degrees Celsius. We start with the two curves the default curve and the curve with a minus 30 curve optimizer. Now let's undervolt at a low temperature and overvolt at medium and high temperatures. We find that our VF curve at 50 degrees Celsius overvolts significantly. That makes sense because we configured the high frequency shaper point to significantly overvolt medium and high temperatures with their plus 30 magnitude. 
Now let's undervolt at high temperatures and overvolt at low and medium temperatures. We find that our VF curve at 50 degrees Celsius overvolts marginally compared to the default curve. That makes sense because we configured the shaper point to significantly overvolt low and medium temperatures with their plus 30 magnitude. Now let's undervolt at medium temperature and overvolt at low and high temperatures. Now we find that our curve shaper configuration finally undervolts the curve. That makes sense because we have set an aggressive undervolt for medium temperatures like 50 degrees Celsius. Let's try this again, but at 80 degrees Celsius. Again, we start with two curves, the default curve and the curve with a minus 30 curve optimizer. First, let's undervolt at low temperatures and overvolt at medium and high temperatures. We find that indeed the curve is significantly overvolted. That makes sense because both the medium and high temperature range of the high frequency shaper point is configured to overvolt and 80 degrees Celsius is as high as a temperature you'll get on AMD Ryzen CPUs. Now let's do the opposite and undervolt at high temperatures and overvolt at low and medium temperatures. Now we find the complete opposite is happening. Our VF curve at 80 degrees Celsius is massively undervolted and at 5.3 gigahertz, it even matches the undervolt we get with curve optimizer. To round up our testing, let's do the same for the curve at zero degrees Celsius. We find that when we undervolt at low temperatures, we see indeed a slight undervolt for the zero degree curve. When we undervolt at medium temperatures and overvolt at low and high temperatures, we find that our zero degree curve indeed slightly overvolts. This was again a very data and chart centric video, just like the first one that I made on Curve Shaper. If this is all a little bit overwhelming to you, here's the three key takeaways from this video. First, I showed that the Precision Boost technology has an important temperature dimension to it. By lowering the operating temperature, you effectively undervolt the CPU cores. That can create substantial headroom for boosting to higher frequencies, especially at the upper end of the VF curve. Second, undervolting by lowering the temperature and undervolting with the curve optimizer and curve shaper tools work in tandem. In other words, you lower the voltage with a lower temperature, and then you can further lower the voltage again with Curve Optimizer or Curve Shaper. Third, Curve Shaper provides us with much more precise tools to fine tune the VFT curve than Curve Optimizer, as it enables us to adjust the undervolt for specific temperature ranges. So how does all this work when you try to apply it into a daily overclock? Well, I'll try to show that with the Ryzen 7 9700X in a different video, so stay tuned for that.